Learning how to build worlds in Blender has been a steady effort towards an independent animation career. In order to enjoy the ride along the way, my process is tapered to how much fun I'd actually have building it. Hopefully a couple of pieces made you laugh, <laughs> as that is exactly the kind of tone I'd like my career to embody. Each world I create has limitless potential to invoke emotion from the audience, and the more realistic my skill grows into, the more the audience will be able to immerse themselves into an, an animation. In order to achieve what is seen in these pieces here, the process may seem complicated, but it's actually quite simple. In the latest version of Blender, I start out by building the world, usually referencing a building in the process. HDRI maps are imported externally to create atmosphere for each piece. Once my world is built, I animate whatever factors I want to animate in the same 3D program. From here, I can either export the animation or illustration and run with it, or I can import it into Clip Studio Paint for further marks. To simulate graffiti, I create a graffiti-esque 2D digital piece and then import it as a wall texture in Blender. My style combines a 3D world with 2D characters, so much post-editing is done to make these two unify correctly. I have to go over certain places with a brush to unify the flats of each medium. An alternative to this is seen in the piece Introducing M, where I'll posterize the 3D environment completely. And the biggest appeal to my art is the process centered around creating it. I can sit here and paint an idealistic picture, but really, Blender is nothing but problem solved after problem solved. So much stuff goes wrong, I never get bored. <laughs> Twenty twenty was a mess, so going into this school year, I only wanted to paint things that made people happy. I tried to use nice colors and nice subjects. The subjects were the students at my school. They're all so talented and beautiful, so I wanted to paint them. Half of my show is portraits, one person from each discipline. When the portraits are put together, they make a rainbow. The theme behind the other half of my pictures is nostalgia. All of the pictures have something to do with the blanket that I've had since I was a baby. Some are more deconstructed than others, but it's always there in some way. I also included some of my character designs. I wanted to use them in a story someday, and it makes me very happy thinking about them. Smug. That's only one way to describe this piece. Ent being smug with her weird expression on her face, her mouth agape, smiling, probably laughing at you, as she has the yellow crown on top of her head. I made this piece through a feeling of being smug after playing a game. Well, more specifically, a game of Mario Party. Nine times out of ten, I usually win. And I get this feeling continuously as I win. Especially right after I unexpectedly make someone rage quit. I'm not really proud of it. But it does add to the smugness of it. So I created this piece through that feeling, at least I think is a feeling. <laughs> Hello, my name is Sonya Magic, and welcome to my showcase. I don't stick to a particular theme when creating art, but rather I see an image in my head that I feel the need to produce. This is why my showcase is a matchup of different artworks that I've done that show my voice and my talent in my work. Most of them are of characters that I have created, while others are just images in my head that I wanted to make. Most of my work is digital, which I have made by drawing with my finger on my phone. I like digital art more than traditional because I am able to better convey the emotion I want to portray and use a variety of colors that I may not have on hand in person. I hope you enjoy viewing my art along with the rest of the showcase. Thank you.